Good morning, Mr. Thayer with you here. Third grade math lesson. Today, we're looking at module one, lesson seven. Now we're gonna jump into topic C today, okay? And today's lesson is gonna be a quick one because we're just gonna really focus on one term here and what we're gonna look for um, when we're putting some problems together. We've been working on taking some arrays, taking what they have, piecing information together and working from there. Today is going to kind of be a little bit similar, but there's one key topic that I really want you to keep in your mind when it comes to multiplication and when it comes to addition. I'm going to show you in a second here. So here's my panel here with um, our lessons here. So module one, lesson seven, topic C. We're moving right along here. Um, first things first, skip counting. Um, Got to be able to count by twos, threes, fours. Kind of get that stuff in your head. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Got to be able to go by 2s. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. If you're good at understanding how skip counting, uh, multiplication comes very, very easy to you. So just kind of think about that today. Maybe jot down some notes counting by 2s, counting by 3s, and stuff like that. Okay? Again, I keep coming back to it. Arrays, rows, and columns. Arrays are just that picture of that grouping that we're going to work from. Rows go across in a, set, in, a number, in a number problem, and columns go from top to bottom. Okay, so we're going to look at a cut. We're going to look at two arrays today. We're going to look at the rows. We're going to look at the columns, and we're going to form a multiplication sentence. Okay, now here is the big part, the big picture idea that I want you to understand here: commutative property. Okay, big word. Commutative property. And all that is telling us is if you have an addition or a multiplication sentence, there's no difference in order. So if I take numbers and I flip them, not the answer, but the numbers that we're using um, when it comes to the factors or the addends, when I move those around, if I switch places, the, the answer is still going to be the same. Okay, so we're going to see that today um, as we break down a couple of problems all right so just briefly when we're talking about adding and I, I could just use my fingers here quickly if i have two plus three we know that two plus three equals five right but if i flip those around and i added three plus two that would still add up to five so two plus three and three plus two are still going to give you the answer of five and that's what the community property is telling us today, that we can switch those two numbers around and it's not going to have an effect on the answer. The same thing holds true when we talk about multiplication. We can flip those numbers, and, but the answer is going to stay the same. And I'm going to show you an example of that. Okay. So briefly, quickly, I should say, um, again, not much on this board, not much on this board right here. Okay. But, I get, but I'm going to show you a couple of steps that we're going to make some things happen here. We're going to take what they gave us, and we're going to make some things happen. First things first, let's talk about rows and columns here, okay? So we know that these are our rows, and those are our columns, okay? And you can see that there's two items in each one. So let's start off by counting by twos. So right here we know we have... 2, right here we have 4, right here we have 6, and right here we have 8. I told you guys skip counting was going to come into it. 2, 4, 6, 8, okay? We already took some information from just this quick array. We, we looked at this array, we counted 2, 4, 6, 8, we're making things happen right now, okay? So what we have to do is we have to take this array and turn it into a multiplication sentence. So, okay, in our multiplication sentence, we're going to need a bunch of pieces here. We're going to need to know, have things that we're going to multiply, and we're going to have to have our answer, all right? We already know our answer because we know 2, 4, 6, 8. We know that there's 8 circles in this array. So we can put that right in there. We know we got eight 
circles in our array. All right? So all we need to do is find the two factors that are going to go in here. Okay? Very simply, we're just going to look at the rows, how many rows and how many columns. So in this first line here that we're looking for, we're going to look for how many rows we have. We have one, two, three, four. We have four rows. Okay, all the way across is one, all the way across two, three, and four. We have four rows of circles. All right? So those are our rows. How many columns do we have? Let's go right here. All the way down, that's one column. All the way down, that's two columns. Okay? So we have two columns. All right? If we put that together, we have four times two equals eight. See how we worked that together? We had just a picture, and we took what we have in that picture, we took what we have in that array, we looked at the rows, we looked at the columns, and we were able to put a number sentence together. Okay? Pretty cool. Pretty cool when we have nothing. All right? We have, we skip counted, two, four, six, eight. Nice job. We looked at our array here. We looked at our rows, one, two, three, four. We looked at our columns, one, two. And then we plugged it all in. 4 times 2 equals 8. All right? Very good. Now, I'm going to change it up a little bit for you. Let's pretend I, take, I took this and I just turned it. Okay? I took this array and I turned it on its side. Okay? That's where the community property is going to start to really un, to take place and kind of give you an idea. So what I did was, there you go. I turned it. Okay? Here, I'll show you the first, there's the first paddle, and now I turned it on its side, okay? So we're going to go from here, and we turned it, and now we have this, okay? So what we need to do here is we need to, we need to find a number sentence here. But this time, the skip counting is not going to be by twos. Well, it could be by twos if we went two, four, six, eight, we could do it that way, or we could count by fours. We have four here, we have eight here, we could count by fours, four, eight, 12, 16, 20, and so on, all right? So here's our, here's our array right here, and our job now is to write a number sentence, okay? You're seeing some similar numbers right now. We're seeing some things that are the same, Let's see what happens here. So we know we have to find some factors here. Okay. We already know that in our array, there are eight. There's eight circles in there. I already know that. I already know that answer. Simple. We got that just from looking at the array and doing some skip counting. Or even if we didn't, weren't able to skip count, we could count up all those circles. And if we counted them, we know we had eight. So now we got to find factors. Okay. So factors, let's take a look at rows. How many rows do we have here? All the way across, that's one row. All the way across, that's two rows. So we have two rows right here. All right, I have my other board ready. There we go, perfect. We have two rows all the way across, all the way across. Now, how many columns do we have? One, two, three, four. There we go. We have four columns, okay? We have two rows, we have four columns. Two times four equals eight. Huh. Now I know what you're thinking, like, wait a second. We did, let me get these both in here, perfect. We looked at the array two different ways, and we were able to make two number sentences and come up with the same answer. There is your commutative property right there, okay? Two times four and four times two, okay? See how we took that and we put that together and there it is right there. Two times four equals eight, four times two equals eight, okay? So if you know those, no matter if you flip them or not, you're still gonna get the same answer. And that holds true with all multiplication. So I can put anything else in there. 
I could put 3 times 1 equals 3. And then if I flipped it, 1 times 3, sorry for my bad handwriting here, equals 3. Okay? So that's the commutative property. Understanding that if we take factors and we flip them, the answer is still going to be the same. Okay? So understanding that 2 times 4 is the same as 4 times 2. Same answer. We're just flipping those factors. And that's what the community property is all about. In addition and in multiplication, if you flip those around, your answer is still going to be the same. Okay? Very, very quick lesson today. I want you to practice that commutative property in your answer, uh, in your answer sheets below. Answer those questions. I will talk to you guys very soon. Mr. Thayer saying, see you guys later.